that wasn't always the case. The first four or five years, I grinded like nobody. I mean, other than like people outside of our niche, right? But in our niche, I think I work pretty hard and we have a pretty large YouTube channel to boot. Same thing in lawn care with our landscaping company. Like we've grown from 75 grand in revenue to 300 grand in revenue in four years. That's a lot of growth for us and it's pretty profitable company too. So it's not like we just did YouTube only. Like I was growing my lawn and landscape company, picking up clients, dropping clients. This year we have the biggest, burliest, best business I've ever had. Like the profit margins, the guys, that are on the crew and on the team, like the accounts we've picked up. I am like, I told Liz, I'm like, I am so happy with how much we're crushing it with our traditional long landscaping business. Now that being said, like I've downshifted a gear this year because I've really, really, really wanted to prioritize time with Liz and Emmy. I think, you know, if you're running a marathon, there's times when you're gonna run, there's times when you're gonna pace, there's times when you might jog, and then there's times when you're gonna sprint. How do you build a successful business while also building a successful family? We're gonna interview Brian Fullerton today and hear his thoughts on building a successful family and business. I'm here hanging out with my brother and brother-in-law. What's up, guys? How we doing? You might see Robbie before. He's got one of the most viral videos on the internet with your pickup line. Most people call me Robbie. But you can call me anytime. What's your name? Most people call me Robbie, but you can call me anytime. Oh, okay, here we go. And he made the half court shot and Michael's got three kids under three years old. So how do you manage all that, man? A lot of caffeine, right. a lot of caffeine. <laughs> well, Brian Fullerton is highly caffeinated and we're gonna hear his thoughts on how you not only build a successful business, he has a successful lawn care business, successful media business, but he also has a successful marriage and is a good father to little Emmy. So without further ado, here's the man, the myth, the legend, Brian Fullerton. So how do you keep you know Liz happy and Emmy you know, then your family respecting you while putting out such a massive amount of content while still, you know, managing Rob and running your business. How, how do you manage all that? Well, there's no simple answer. It's a lot of hard work, but at the same point, there's been ebbs and flows from all of that. It's not like it's just been, you know, we created 5,000 pieces of content and like we're su successful. There's some nights we're putting out a video, some nights we're not putting out a video. It's really tough because people get this like finished product idea and I, I'm not a finished product. In fact, behind the scenes, I'm probably harder on myself than anybody you know and Liz is at behind the scenes pumping me back up saying, hey, you're awesome, you know? Because I'm like, this guy's got it going on or this guy's got it going on or maybe you guys feel the same way like with your traditional long landscape company or whatnot. Like this guy's got a skid steer or this guy's got a dump truck this guy's bought another dump truck and this guy's got another trailer. And sometimes that works on you because you're like, you, you try to run the numbers and you're like, how much are they making or how are they doing this? Or, oh, they bought another truck. They probably just financed it. And then sometimes you can get petty or jealous or this or that, right? Like, so I don't, maybe, maybe other people play those head games and it's just, or, or don't, and it's just me. But to be honest with you, it's been just, like I said, a little bit every single day. But the first couple years of YouTube, we hit it. Like there was a window. I wanted to have a bigger YouTube channel. There was hundred people, you know, 50 people putting out content. I just kind of personally knew like, it's kind of like a race to the top, right? There's gonna be, in four or five years, there's probably gonna be three or four big channels. The people that don't treat it serious are probably gonna fizzle out. There's only so many brands, there's only so many companies, there's only, it's, it's the 80-20 rule about everything, right, in life. Like you talked about that on a podcast recently. So, so that's the principle, yeah, Dr. Frank, that was a great episode, by the way. Yeah, so so I realized, well, I probably should work hard now to, be, to make sure that I'm in the top 20%. I, I wasn't trying to be number one or number two or number three. I just wanted to be in the top 20. I just said, I'll be consistent and just try to get there. So we, we did work hard and, and it was just Liz and I, like we were working, we would, I'd make a video, but I, I could still spend time with Liz. It wasn't like I was working 90 hours a week. I don't want to ever try to present that because some people, they think like you just got to hustle to hustle and just work, 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 work. And that's true to a degree, but there is a balance. So like, for example, we worked really hard. We got to a higher subscriber count on YouTube, but this last nine, 10 months with Emmy, I've downshifted a gear. I've put out maybe less content on YouTube, less Instagram posts, but we've, because of like us being a, a higher ranked or a higher viewed or a higher subbed or a higher follower count, we still get the same amount of result or more because it, it is a good, uh, the rich get richer kind of a thing. But that wasn't always the case. The first four or five years, I grinded like nobody. I mean, other than like people outside of our niche, right? But 
in our niche, I think I work pretty hard and we have a pretty large YouTube channel to boot. Same thing in lawn care with our landscaping company. Like we've grown from 75 grand in revenue to 300 grand in revenue in four years. So that's a lot of growth for us. And it's a pretty profitable company too. So it's not like we just did YouTube only. Like I was growing my lawn and landscape company, picking up clients, dropping clients. This year we have the biggest, burliest, best business I've ever had, like the profit margins, the guys that are on the crew and on the team, like the accounts we've picked up. I am like, I told Liz, I'm like, I am so happy with how much we're crushing it with our traditional long landscaping business. Now, that being said, like I've downshifted a gear this year because I've really, really, really wanted to prioritize time with Liz and Emmy. I think, you know, if you're running a marathon, there's times when you're going to run there's times when you're going to pace, there's times when you might jog, and then there's times when you're going to sprint. This year, I've really tried to, I wouldn't say like put out less content. I've just really tried to block. Having a baby has like humbled me with my schedule because it used to be like, you could just make a post whenever, or I get home and I could edit a YouTube video for an hour and a half and get it on YouTube and Liz and I would just go to dinner. Now it's like, I get home at four, five, six. Liz wants to, you know, give me at me. She wants a break, which is totally understandable if you have a newborn, you, you, you can relate. And so I can't just get home and edit a YouTube video and post it by six, seven o'clock, right? I have to be way more intentional. So I have to have videos in the queue, edit really early morning or really late night, because for me personally, like, I only get this window with Emmy for, it's her first, it, she's brand new baby. Like I wanna have a strong connection with her. So I've really tried to make sure that from five to nine is family time. Like, like you guys wouldn't believe. I, I, I'm not perfect at it, but there's some times I gotta get home and edit a video for half hour or make a quick Instagram post. But I'll tell you what, like I can tell you as honest as I could ever be, like from five to nine, I've tried to make sure that I'm here for Liz and Emmy. Like eight o'clock is seven, seven, seven thirty is dinner. 8, 8, 30 is bath time, 9, 9, 30, Emmy goes down with, with Liz. Sometimes I'll come back out and I will be honest with you, there's times I'm editing videos at 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night and I am exhausted. Like it's, I'm not getting as much sleep as I'd like for sure, but so what, you know, who cares? Life goes on. If you want to win, you're gonna have to make some sacrifices and I'm competitive, but I'm telling you what. I, <laughs> you are competitive, bro. <laughs> I, I, I want to win. I want to be like one of the guys. I want to have, I want to be in the top 100 with Paul and, oh. and Caleb, you know, but I'll tell you what, my number one priority 100% is just making sure that Liz is happy, Emmy's happy. Cause it, man, I'll tell you what, like having a baby and adding that to your life and your marriage and having two small businesses, like it's a lot, dude, it's a lot. I don't care about the money. I've literally never cared about the money. I know it sounds weird because when you're when you're broke, you're like, dude, it's all about the money. And then you start making a couple bucks and you realize, dude, health is so much more important. Strong relationships are so much more important. I don't know if I'm speaking out there to anybody, but like I've done the hustle, 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 work, work, work thing. And it's fun. and It's cool. But I'll tell you straight up, I definitely more appreciate the, the family aspect. We've seen more friends. We've seen more of you guys. I've seen more of my mom, more of her mom, more of Liz and more of my baby this last nine, 12 months than I did the first four years doing YouTube and running the company and growing everything all at once. And I'll tell you what, I would not have it any other way. I'm, I'm happy. Like I'm internally happy. I'm not trying to sell you guys on it. Like I'm personally happy. And that's just, that's, that's what it all, it's all about, man. So.